welcome back to the offside of the team. We've got Tamakochi here. Tamafro also. Uh, Junior Juice, Ferrani and the, and, and the place to be. Sounds like a weird radio jingle. Sorry, I'm from Flavor. Not, um, not anymore. Uh, Danny here. You, <laughs> and we've got the also Ali in the house. So uh, how was everyone? How are we doing? We all good? Yeah, yeah bro. Yeah. Um, we had an interesting uh, first podcast where we talked about sports, but we did this thing where we kind of sat afterwards and we tried to figure out, well, we kind of knew what we were going to talk about, uh, which was a, a very deep discussion here in Aotearoa, which is the Treaty of Waitani. And uh, we went on this uh, uh, this little journey for like a good 20 or 35 minutes about um, our kind of perspectives on what that is and what it means for Pacific people here. And then uh, Ali was like, no, 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 stop, send for the pod. So now we're here. <laughs> for our culture podcast um, And so yeah I think It will probably be best to kind of give context to My perspective and understanding of what the treaty is Which is as I said off camera Ill informed I don't know much about that But I'm always bigging up my pro Māori brothers And pro Māori whatever that means Like I've always kind of taken the side of Māori In these debates even though I haven't dug enough But we've talked about what does that actually mean For Pasapika people So um, I would love to give the floor to the team and I'm going to answer some semi kind of ignorant questions, but from a safe space because I'm wanting to understand what everyone's thoughts are here about where we stand as islanders here. So, Ali. It's very important for us for two reasons. Well, I think two reasons. The uh, first reason is that Pacific people, our relationship with Māori predates the um, Treaty of Waitangi. Our relationship, Pacific people relationship with Māori goes back thousands, a thousand years. Uh, we have the same ancestors. Mm. So I think it's very important for our specific people to sort of like um, stay in touch, stay in touch with old family and to um, uh, to understand that we are connected. We're, we are connected with Māori uh, cousins is how we like to describe it. Mm. The other reason why we should pay attention to what's happening with Māori and what's happening to Māori is that... If Balangi treat Māori unfairly and if they treat them poorly, then they're not going to treat us any better. You know, so... Um, We're next. Pardon? We're next. Oh, we'll be treated worse. <laughs> we'll be treated worse. Māori are the indigenous people of this land. They have a, a history of creating a beautiful New Zealand kauri tree, an unbelievable New Zealand that we all benefit from. And if Balangi can't treat them right and can't treat them fairly... We have no chance. They don't need. They, they will think so poorly of us, treat us like shit. They already do. They already do. Mm. So that's why it's very important for us to pay attention on how they treat Modi, because you know that treatment is gonna intensify when it's us, when it's when it's our turn, or whenever they come across us. So I think either way, we we always have to pay attention to what's happening to Modi. Mm. Uh, we always have to pay attention of um, what Modi is saying as well. And I think by default, every Pacific person will always support Māori. But remember, Māori, uh, they, they have a spectrum too. You know, there were times during the mandates where I would see a Māori activist demand that other Māori people be banned from society. So we, we, we have to understand that not all Māori voices are one voice. Yeah. And they have their separate iwi and their apu and all of that for a reason. They have lots of different opinions, just like we do. That's why we have different villages, yeah. and that's how our villages started off, you know. If you don't like this, piss off. So, yeah, so they piss off, start up their own village. So, um, yeah, I think on the, on the treaty stuff, everybody stay aware. We live here. Of course, we should all stay aware, but be aware that they have, Māori have a, a wide uh, spectrum of different opinions. And also be aware that we must also carve our own path, that we are not, we weren't part of the treaty, no matter how much we are connected. The Pacific people are not part of the treaty. We are not part of any settlements. Mm. We don't get the $2 billion that Tainui get. We don't get the $2 billion that a lot of their, their tribes or their um, iwi get. Okay, so we, we must stay focused on, on, our, on the sovereignty over ourselves, yeah. on your own dream, sovereignty over your dreams, sovereignty over your aspirations. You must, we must carve our own path as well. Because we do not, um, we do not have the benefit that um, Maori have. We do not have guaranteed parliamentary seats. Okay, we do not have our own political party in New Zealand. All of our 
politicians are attached to um, Bailangi leaders. <laughs> so it's very important to understand that a lot of us do support Māori and their battle for um, equitable treatment to be treated fairly, yeah. while at the same time we understand that we are not them. We do not get what Modi get, and rightfully they get their stuff, but we need to carve our own path and be strong about it, be proud about it, and be our own sovereign. So from the ignorant side of things, of me just being a pro Modi, like what that, what does that look like to me? So as a filmmaker, all the filmmakers that I look up to in this country, uh, for the most part are Modi, and they've set the standard, and their artists show what the world. So I always look at that as like, for as a Samoan, that's a template for me to go, okay, this is how you kind of navigate the world. So through that, I've always been like, pro Maori this, pro Maori that, and I've always looked to the other side. One of the discussions we had, because we talked about the brother that's in the National Party, mm. and we talked about like what benefits do like Pacific people have? Not necessarily anti waitangi but what does it look like for us to kind of go the other side? Because typically we're quite left, we're quite liberal, right? Mm. And then some certain spaces, but... Like, how do we navigate that? Like, what does that look like to us if we were to just outside the box go, wait, 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 what's necessarily best for Māori is probably not good for us. Like, what does that look like? I don't know. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm still trying to figure that oh. out. Like, I, I want, like, you said, like, if Balangi country, um, Māori, right, um, then... We got no chance. We got no chance. And you know what? Prime example of that? Australia. That's the perfect example. If you want to look at a at a at a system that doesn't treat their natives right, their indigenous right. Um, but why are we tied why are we tied to Modi? If if you know what I mean? Like mm, I don't think we are though. Yeah. I don't think we are. If you look at treaty settlements yeah. and you look at um the developments, we Pacific people are not getting it anywhere near what Modi are getting. And mm. rightfully so. That's okay. So I think when we, our support, obviously we all support the Indigenous people, um, Māori and that, but I think it's also important to understand that we also got to carve our own path. Mm. Um, we have to, because we don't get the $2 billion that Tainui get. We don't get the $2 billion that um, the other uh, iwis and that are getting. Yeah. So that no one, no Samoan, no Polynesian is getting $2 billion anything, and they have a few yeah. who are getting over $2 That's billion. That's interesting. So. Like, like, obviously, yeah, by right, their land, money, like, cool. Um, but you brought that to my attention. I was like, yes, yeah, so, controversial question, why are we supporting them? <laughs> because we can say, like, yeah, we are closely aligned culturally. Yeah, the Balangi will mistreat us. But, like, kind of like, what is it in it for us, like, type of thing? Yeah, I think we're supporting them because we're just... We're just good, man. Yeah. <laughs> but all those reasons that I've said before, and um, I think it's, it's the right thing to do. It's, it's the right thing to do. Um, really, yeah. Everything that's happened here since colonization, everything about colonization was wrong. Yeah. Um, it's the right thing to do. But we, we can't lose sight of the fact that um, a lot of us are not Māori and mm -hmm. that um, we have to get on and do our stuff as well. We've got to carve our own part. You know, I, I feel like maybe some of our people... Um, I'm not too sure, but you know, all the emails in Maldi now. Or, you know, a lot of a, a lot of people are yeah. are trying to speak Maldi, and a lot of people are including themselves. And um, you know, I think that's cool, but I can tell when it's put on. Oh, and it's I'm in an industry that's <laughs> I'm in an industry, a media industry that will open up with a Maldi now, mm. but in the back they're not talking like that. Yeah, like right it's right. just a like the facade of it is. Mm. Like I, I guess like it's it's cool that we're trying, but. Is it genuine? And does it come from no, a genuine not. space? It's, it's not genuine. Like, all of it is a facade. And that's a problem. The old way of learning Pacific language, the old way of learning Māori, is that you were raised in a Māori family, you did Māori things, you were spoken to in Māori or in Samoan or whatever. Mm. Okay? And so you're learning your language, and at the same time, you're learning your culture. Right? And you're intimate with your family. You're learning love. You're learning all this. Right now, you can learn the language without doing any of that shit. Yeah. You go, you pay your teacher, you learn the language. And so now you're getting people who have the money, you know, because uh, classes are full, but somehow all these rich white people are able to, now you can learn the language without doing any of the fails, without, <laughs> without doing any of Again, the culture the things. the cultural things. The culture things. So yeah. before the language was tied to the culture, 
you could only learn the language if you lived in the village. Mm. Okay, and you did the fiaus and you did the work and you, you, you slept in the one folly with the whole family are sleeping together, telling the bedtime stories at night to pass on the history. You're learning that in that language. Language was connected to culture and our culture was connected to love. So language was connected to our love. Now they've separated that from the culture. Now you can go be as white racist as you want and come and take the nine o'clock class to, to learn how to speak Maori. And tick the box. Okay? Yes, and tick the box. And identify and say you're diverse and morena and then go in the back and call the DJ or Ori or something. You, you, know, <laughs> you can fake it. Yep. And that's, a, and that's the problem. Like when colonizers get a hold of something, see if it's genuine. Okay, so that's a danger that we all got to watch out for in our cultures, you know, is that we're giving colonizers these taonga, these sacred things like language, but we're giving them the stuff without the love that came with it, yeah. without the culture that came with it. So you give it. If they don't have the love, we know what they got. Yeah. They got the exploitation. They've got the cunningness, the lies, and the colonial mentality. And you give them the biggest whip in our language, well, but that's a whole nother issue. So, no, I mean, I, I, that sits on like why, like, why the treaty and discussion is an important thing because in my head, if you take it away, we lose all of that stuff. But then it's not even genuine in most cases anyway, like we've alluded to. And so, I guess what are the the plus sides of us aligning our, ourselves with Maori? Like, what does like we always have, but. I guess, like, I'm trying to look at it from an angle of, of, do we go national or do we go, you know what I mean? Like, Oh, man, you, I reckon just vote the Māori Party. Yeah. <laughs> you know, get out of the na national and Labour, but we can't. Like, we're entrenched in Labour, yeah. unfortunately. Some of the kind of issues that we're dealing with today politically affect us in a community sense. Like, again, we don't have the billions of dollars. No. So why do we have to support you? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but deep inside, it's like, no, nah, that's my Māori brother because I grew up in a Māori neighborhood. So it's like, you kind of play off that. But as you get older, you, you have to think about yourself in a selfish way. But that's not typically the Polynesian way. And I think that's the reason why we're still closely aligned to our Māori brothers and sisters, eh? Mm, I think it's always going to be that way as well. Yeah. You know, our language is very close. Yeah. Um, our experiences are very close. Mm. Um, and even though, you know, they are able to access more resources now, yeah. Which is great. Okay. Um, I think we're always going to be close. We're, we're all living in the same areas. Well, um, mainly, but just because of our experiences, our history. But like I said, like um, we are not, we are different. You know, there's a lot of stuff that we're not getting, which is okay. But we're seeing more and more other communities come into our community. So, um, you know, a lot of these shops now are run by Indians, run by Asians. And again, they have access to a lot more capital than us. Mm. So in a sense, we are probably the lowest on the ladder at the moment of having access to capital. That's and interesting because, and I don't know if it's like a bias because I'm around the islanders all the, all the time, but if I understand in the, in the business sense, or the, like business, yeah, business sense, but I feel like we're a lot more prominent, mm. but when we're probably failing in other areas, right? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, well, prominent. What do you mean we're prominent? Like we're out here. <laughs> yeah. Our language is out here. We're like the third oh. most spoken language in the country. We we got we got Samoans leading the haka. Like we've got Samoans captaining the the prick and hip hop dance teams and winning world championships. So we're mm. prominent, but then it kind of seems like we're we're not on a communal level. We're not prominent. Well, I'm only really speaking from my community and in, in Manureo, man, just right. all, all the shops around my area, the pack and save, everything is owned by Indians. Um, I see what you mean. Yeah, it's the same out here. <laughs> yeah. So um, I think all that stuff is great. All that stuff is great. But does it translate? Um, we've always had All Blacks. We've always had Pacific All Blacks. We've always had um, awesome cultural performers. Yeah. We've, always, all, we've always been amazingly talented. Um, but I feel like they know that. I feel like they drive us into those spaces in order to drive us out of spaces that they want. Okay, so no, no, yeah, I know what you mean. You know, so <laughs> so long as we're dancing, we're not making the money that they're making. Yeah, and um, no, but that's not to say that that that's not important. I think um, 
No, it's the whole, like, this is kind of my issue currently right now with my current employers that there's not enough of us on the table making decisions yeah. for us. And it's the corporate side of things. Right. And there never is, Boards. and I've worked at a lot of TV companies mm. to know that as much as they market us as the yay mm. dancers and, and all of that, um, they still don't get us. No. And I don't think they ever I will. think they do, though. This is the thing. I think they're very calculated and deliberate. I think they absolutely get us. Mm. There are, remember, there was a stories about how they were using the poker machines in South Auckland to fund Rimi Rua rugby and their sports. Mm. So they, they position these money-making things and schemes in South Auckland in order to fund Central Auckland, all of their projects. Yeah. I think they know exactly who we are, and I think they have... Um, deliberately manipulated us for their gain. Yeah. You know, use pawns, use some of the most prominent Polynesians out there to garner up and to gather us and be used how see fit. I don't want to get into other stuff, but... <laughs> no, it kind of leads on to... So we've, we've touched on the treaty. Um, we've touched on where, I guess, some Pacific people stand in that. But then one of the other questions we were talking about conversating about today is where do we stand today if, if the politics are, are as they are now what where do we stand as Pacific and what is our best hope what should we be looking at doing um what's our way forward because I yeah you talked about us being kind of lower in in, in, in the ladder and in the, in the grand scheme of things and I agree I agree I think we are in some of the most robust stats but where do we stand? Like, what's our next hope? Like, what do we do? Do we just continue on? Mm. Do we side? Do we pick a side? Well, first of all, on that lowest in the stats, sorry, I just mean like we have the lowest access to capital. Yeah. Um, I know someone who's a doctor getting $450,000 and can't get a mortgage. And that is not anything on their fault. Like, we just don't have the people in the position who are going to give us, yeah. you know, the capital. There's two kind of talking points that I want to address, and, and probably the first one is the racial undertones and trying to understand where that comes from because it's the silliest thing to me, like for someone to go to a bank that has an accomplished job and they grew up in the system and they studied in the system and they're told no because you're Samoan. And I know it's a real thing because just as I was leaving this car park in Sky City, I got stopped because apparently the shirt I'm wearing is a patch jacket. And here you go. By security. Right. And so they checked me and they checked on the back and they asked, looked at my tattoos and everything. Um, but this is normal. <laughs> and so we'll talk about the racial undertones, but I want to talk about that thing that Tama was talking about, about sovereignty and kind of owning um, that kind of ownership or being on the table. This is what Plus 6-4 is. This is what this platform is supposed to be and this is what we're trying to build. Um, because I, I, would, I would know that if, if you were signed up by Sky Sports and they put you on, they would have a way to market you the way that they want to market for you without you having a say. The whole purpose of Plus 64 for us is getting creatives, mainly Pacific creators that are sick and tired of being told what to do on how they look, especially when they've already got a built market um, and being told you can't get this money because you're not listening to us. It's literally the beginning of, of Plus 64. Like I've been through it. These guys have been through it. It's a platform for Pacific kind of freedom in a sense or creative freedom but at the same time we also understand that we have an audience that are here for us and the social space is like the best space for us so I was just I was more speaking to your point Tom as to like what that looks like this is it also <laughs> we might not have the, the millions behind us or the mm. advertisers but it will come if we can't like if we work together like this this is the whole point of why we started this and why we've been talking about this idea for literally the past 10 years <laughs> yes, we've been we've been talking about our frustrations with dealing with companies that are funded by NZ on it or Creative New Zealand or the Film Commission, but there's no one on that side that sits on the board that's from the hood. Mm. There's no one that grew up next door that we played footy with. There's no one that we went to church with or we did a C with. There's no one they they don't see us. They don't see us like that. But I think you're right. Like they do know, um, they do know what they're doing. Uh, and they don't want our voices at the table because I've just come from a situation where um, my voice is not wanted anymore. It's apparently too hoary, and that's okay. I'll leave. Um, but I wanted to talk about the racial undertones and where that comes from in the makeup of New Zealand. 
because we have, in my opinion, we've done a lot more good for this country than some of the things that will be put on us on a police T7 or mm. back in the days it was crime watch. But where do those racial undertones come from? Yeah. Well, then, <laughs> well, they always come from white people. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, like, oh, come on, uh, this history is built off racism. This this history was, uh, sorry, this country was born out of racism. Mm. You know, in order to colonize anyone who was brown skinned, they hunted them down or they imprisoned them. It, it's built on racism. And everywhere mm. the British went, every colony have the same problems. You know, they got these massive, they're not even undertones, they're just explicitly racist. You got racist policies. Um, we all know about the Dawn Raids, specifically hunting Pacific people and sending them back on the plane. Um, racism is everywhere where the British went and it's it's been here and all the shit that we go through just like you went through today. You know, it's, it's, it's not gone, you know, because people are woke. And it's not even just like white people. You know, like um, the Indian, the Indian person, the Indian owner at the mobile station on Hill Road. Oh, excuse me, are you Modi? Oh no, I'm someone. Oh yeah, I don't like Modi, and then just went on. It's like what the fuck, okay? So, and then you know that she's gonna have an opinion on Samoans too. Of course. All right. So if that's the Modi one, she's got one for Samoans <laughs> too. Yeah. Okay. So it's not just white people. Like even Indians have their opinions on us. Even. Um, Asians have their opinions and man I grew up in New Zealand playing rugby under 15s biggest game Auckland Auckland versus Bay of Pliny you go down there and you play the Māori down there bro all you, oh yeah all you fucking boongers <laughs> fucking coconuts yep. let's go smash them bro it's um, even it, at a grassroots level bro, it's pretty bad <laughs> it's bad bro and you hear it from the players and you hear it from the side man it's just it's, it's everywhere. That's why it's even more important for us to knuckle down on our own shit. Yeah. Start controlling our own shit. Sovereignty over our own shit. Okay? So um, movies by us. Um, podcasts, media by us. You know? And um, by us, I mean different opinions and, you know, a whole yeah. spectrum. whole spectrum like you were saying. But we need to control more of what we know. You know, Pacific culture. Um, Pacific elements, um, and just um, because racist overtones, undertones, yeah. you know, um, they're very cunning in their way. They'll give you, if you apply for government funding, you get your funding, but then in comes the white um, accountant, and in comes, oh, it has to be filmed with this company, and you got to use all, all these, um, uh, all this equipment hired from this Balangi company, and like, Sovereignty. We, you have to start controlling your own shit and doing it yourself. You know, fuck this. We're going to do it ourselves. And um, racism is always going to be there from the cops. And I'm not saying that to allow us to accept it. I'm saying that, that you know, everyone harden up and fucking say something about it. You know, stand up and say something about it. Yeah. And I love that shit. I always look for that shit. Like, we have to. You got to speak up and say something about it. But it is everywhere. And it's from everyone. It's not just Bailangi at the moment. You know, a lot of these ethnicities want to be seen in, um, in a good light by white people. Mm. So they'll join them in the condemnation of us, you know, because we're the easy targets because we're only 8%. Yeah. We're only 8% of the population. Is that what we do? We join on this side? <laughs> we, join national, we join national and uh, we just conform? No, no, never, never, ever conform. Yeah. Never conform. Only conform to yourself. Yeah. Okay, never conform to the mindset of set minds. Always be true to your soul, be true to your beginnings and your culture. And, and that way, you know, you might find the whole world against you. I have. I found the whole world against me. But I, I was at peace because you sleep good at night. I sleep good at night, man. It's, it's you know, you know, you got to be strong. Be strong. The racism is not just in comments. It's in loans, mortgages. It's in so much bullshit that we go through, you know, but... You know, God always gives the best battles to the strongest warriors. That's what I believe. So, you know, believe in yourself. That's why I want people to learn more about their brilliant history so they can access that strength within themselves and the genius within themselves that we all have. Every Pacific person has it. You know, so don't ever, don't ever fucking, you know, be scared of these, these talentless fucking melaninless people, you know. Just fucking just bar up, man. Speaking of racism... Isn't it a pretty shit? 
why do we have a system that's based on class? You know, and it's still within us to, you know, how do you identify it with that class system as a culture system or an institutional system? No, the, the, this, no. Is, this is how their system is built. This is their colonial system. It, it depends on class. The only way for, to have your wealthy is to have your extremely poor. You know, this is, you know, you see those, <laughs> those communists. I don't say it in a bad way, by the way, if you're a communist, good for you. But, you know, who are like, um, you know, this capitalist system, you know, you know, the classes and all of that. You know, that's that's how they are rich. They have you have to have a, a, a poor section. You, you cannot all be wealthy. So they, they want extreme wealth. They've got to create extreme poverty and they want the extreme wealthy, their people. It's just how their system, this economic system that destroys the earth, destroys the air we breathe. That's how it's made. It's it's crap. It's faulty. It's, but that's their system. Okay, so it's a system that caters for a, for a hundred percent human being. No, it uses no, absolutely not. No. Way. Well, what about the disability? Yeah, exactly, bro. You know, we're not hundred percent. No, hard and up. Yet we're class as second class. Hard up. You know, so less than second class, I reckon, man. Yeah. No, absolutely. No, big time, but this is an inherently racist system. You know, have you seen those uh, memes of like a white baby and a black baby? Oh, hi. We don't see racism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you know what? I actually genuinely believe that. You get two kids who are just come out of, you know, just being born. They're very young and they, they love each other and they literally don't see, like, yep. they're actually, all right? That's the thing. And that means that we're learning how to be racist. We're learning it somewhere. Yeah. Environmental. Yeah. It is completely environmental. Where are we learning to be racist from? So you go to school and the only thing you learn about Samoans is what? You got your fucking dawn raids. You got your um, Black Saturday, the Mao. You know, you didn't even learn that, bro. But, I didn't even learn that at high school. But that's trauma, trauma, trauma. You know, you yeah. got you got Maori land wars. Yeah. Everything, everything is like a I battle see, and yeah. a fight, right? You know, and then. Like when I went to Auckland Grammar, you know, we had to learn the kings and queens of England, right? And I mean, it's unbelievable. And yeah. to this day, to this day, I have never needed to tell someone in order to get a job who the fuck was a, a king in, in 1582 or whatever. Have you? <laughs> it is unnecessary information. But school, we are put in this environment where we must learn these white people Otherwise, we're not going to get our past to the next form, mm. right? So you're forced to learn this irrelevant colonial crap, right? So we got this system that's inherently racist teaching racism. Okay, now let's say a kid goes to school with all of his Balangi classmates and they learn the, it's compulsory. The, great, the greatest navigators in the world were Polynesians. They invented swimming. They were reading clouds before the study of clouds was even invented 400 years. They, they, made, they had um, lifeboats 400 years before anyone. Okay, so they invented swimming, freestyle swimming. They invented surfing, right? What is that Balangi child going to think? Holy man, shit. Guys, those guys are cool. Yes, and what is that brown child going to think? Man, I'm the man. Fuck yes, I'm amazing. <laughs> I'm amazing. Right? And right there from the start, five-year-old, you got a brown kid who feels amazing about himself, and you got a white kid who's going, man, those guys are awesome. What an awesome race. None of that shit. All we hear is white, white, white bullshit, kings and queen, all of this crap, and trauma, trauma, trauma here. Okay, so this kid grows up, and you see it, man, I want, I want to be white. Oh, they got Spider-Man, they got all this shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's an inherently racist system. It's deliberately racist. Okay, we go into schools that have deliberately got these racist curriculums yeah. in order to empower and galvanize the white kids and make them feel great about themselves while at simultaneously to the brown kids make them feel small. Yeah, yeah feel yeah. like shit. And at the same time, man, I wish we were like that. Man, I wish we were like those guys. Yeah. That is the school system that we have in New Zealand. It teaches racism. That's the whole system. And in that system, that's where you kind of get that disparity or that disconnection or fussy, that's when we go or we lose yeah, yeah. ourselves because we don't know who we are. Absolutely. We don't we, know who we are. And we're deliberately made that way. You know, when they, when they brought, um, they took Māori to school, right? And uh, the laws was 100 years ago, the aim was to assimilate 
you know, them, okay, to assimilate into their culture. But they found that the, so they banned Maori language, right? We all know that they banned Maori language. And they found that the Maori kids kept on speaking Maori. So you know what they did? Punish them. No, they invented boarding schools. Oh, yes, yes. To stop been... kids from going back home to learn how to speak their language. They fully, like you said, they fully tried to cut them off from culture, mm. cut them off from who they are in order to assimilate, right? And, and everything that made them powerful and proud of themselves, cut it off. Like, that's what this system is all about. Mm. And in our history, and they make up shit like, oh, yeah, but you guys don't have anything brilliant. There's, there's, there's nothing in your books. Yeah. There's, there's nothing in the books. Captain Cook wrote about Tupaia or Tupaia, mentioned his name over 50 times in his book. His name, the navigator who navigated the endeavor to New Zealand, who, who showed Captain Cook where to go, he's mentioned 50 times in Captain Cook's journal. Don't fucking make up bullshit like our history is not written down. Yeah. It's fucking written down. But it is deliberately, let's not mention him, we'll just talk about Cook. For all those times, we went to school, we never heard about that navigator. So all of our history is there. The brilliance, the genius is all written down in a book. But it is deliberately ignored. It's not an accident. You don't accidentally... Oh shit! I forgot to mention that the navigator who showed Cook where to go was Poly was Poly was Pacific Islander. Yeah, you know. So when we're talking about races, it's not some accident. Okay, this is deliberate, and it's not something that's just popped up. It is actually entrenched. It is actually taught. Racism is taught in New Zealand. Yeah, and it's even corporatized. And um, I think we've got into <laughs> to a really good discussion, but I can be open about this because I quit the job, so fuck them. Um, but I'll give you a story about media and how it's kind of in, in the broadcast sense. So when I started off in TVNZ 2010, um, they have a thing called the Nielsen system, um, which is a rating system. And so what it was traditionally was a chip, a chip that will put in your TV and it'll tell you who's watching what at what time. And so a lady from Nielsen came in and she was talking about the stats around the country. And so she gave up the Auckland stats and she said, okay, we've got four chips in East Auckland. We've got about 10 in Central Auckland. We've got about two in West. How many do you think they had in South Auckland? One. Hey. How many do you think you have, have in Hawke's Bay? They had like eight to 10. Sure. And then I'm going, hmm, wait, so why didn't you put more in South Auckland? Why don't you think they'll, they, like it's a high population, a lot more people watching TV. Um, their reasoning is, we're not targeting their market to sell to. Mm -hmm. So they're literally taking away their advertising dollar yeah. because they don't value our work. They don't mm -hmm. value us as consumers. And so it's the same kind of issue that I've had recently mm -hmm. in radio where they got this thing called the survey. And the survey builds this hip hop and radio, hip hop and R&B radio station I'm working with. Um, they built their survey towards North Shore, 40 year old white woman. Mm -hmm. It's on a booklet. I can show you. <laughs> Like, this is what they, they're, they're targeting. Mm -hmm. And so my point of difference was because I was employed to, to um, um, target this, grow the social media platform engagement, I told them that that's not working. And the reason why it's not showing up on air is because you're neglecting the audience that is actually hip hop and R&B here in Aotearoa. Um, and so I used the social media platform to show that and the numbers grew up. Like our socials in like the space of a month grew up by 18%. Mm. And it wasn't just me. It was our people. And I was trying to show them, these are the numbers, man. Our people are here. We matter. We're consumers. We'll buy in. And they said, no, we don't want to see that shit anymore. Wow. And so as of uh, Friday last week, I quit. <laughs> no. and, I, and I'm walking out. But it goes back to what you're saying. It's inherently racist. I hate using that word. It's, it's a thing, but I just, it's, it's the conscious side of it. Like you guys can see the stats in my kind of situation. You guys can see the stats that we matter. But the fact that you guys are not making us matter, mm. that's a decision that you've made. So you're telling me you don't care. So it's like, you know what I mean? That's kind of where we're at. But I hate using the word racism. I, 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 I like using the word ignorant, but you're right. Like it is inherently racist, but that's a system that's mm. just built into this country. Yeah, bro. And it oh, sucks. Man, I'm sorry <laughs> to go through that shit. Oh, no. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm also happy you went through that shit. Yeah. You know, like you go through, you, you experience that shit. With shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think our solution is using new media, our technology, and doing s snippets of the news and then talking over it. This is bullshit. Rah, rah, you know how they do on TikTok and stuff. Yeah. I think we got to look at new media. We have to just go for new media. You know, speak over on top of racist little clips coming out of the new media. I don't think we'll get sovereignty out of 
the media that generated a lot of the fucking racist undertones and the racism that we go through. Like we've we've had to fight old media racism, whether it be the Herald, New Zealand Herald, or one 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 news TV shows on Channel Two. Like the the old media has been the fucking problem that we have had to fight against. And I think moving forward with all of our kids on TikTok and yeah. all of the social media, they spend way more time watching that shit than watching any and, type of old media media film. And what you find now is old media bending down. Yes. Towards that. And old media will put up a clip from TikTok or they'll discuss, oh, this athlete said this on their uh, X account. And I think that's where we got to go. We got to move forward into the social media. Fuck the old media. You know, those old people can have the old media. But, you know, we are the youngest population in New Zealand. Um, I think we go with the with the young technology, the young brains. It's faster. It extends more. It you know, you do something here and you literally end up in the pocket of someone's pants. You know what I mean? You, it's not on a TV set where they have to go and sit down and watch it at 6 Editor o'clock. and tell yeah. them, this is what yeah. he said yes. through our editing right. powers. Yeah. <laughs> it literally ends up right in their pocket, in their hand. So I think that's way more powerful and that's the direction that we have to go. Like, fuck the old media now. Like what Draymond Green said, absolutely. New media is... New media, NIU, that's the way we got to go. You know, we have to go through that way because the old media did a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. And now we uh, now it's our turn to use the new media to damage the old cunts. It's interesting because it's old media. Cats, old cats. And small horses. Yes. Um, but you've talked about old media and then education system. And these are things that are not in our control, mm. especially in America, mm. Australia, New Zealand, right? And so yeah, no, you're right. Like I'm just I'm just picking you up on that because this is pretty much what this company was born out of, was the frustration of going through the old ways. <laughs> but even even like education system, like man, you know, again, yeah, there's a lot of TikToks coming out with um, educational um, alternative um, histories with evidence. So I mean, and these kids are asking questions because yeah. I, I work with kids, and man. One of their projects was um, how were the pyramids built? And man, some of these answers, well, it's actually a factory. These are 10 year olds. Well, I watched something where it's a factory and it's actually generating power for the people. You know, like these devices are having influence. Yeah. You know? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's both. Like every media, every little piece of technology, there's a, there's a good thing to it and there's a bad thing to mm -hmm. it. But I think you're right in the stance of, of what we need to do going forward, which is collaborating like this because this is essentially what this platform is mm. like it's an ownership of 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 digital media which we can do and control without being told what to do so mm. i don't know so i'd like to leave it there but if you guys had any closing statements that's us